Hi, my name is Ondra, and in this tutorial, I will introduce three basic constructions that are widely used in topological data analysis. These are Voronoi diagrams, Delaunay complexes, and alpha complexes. I want to give you a visual intuition of what these objects are and how they interact with each other. To keep things simple, I will only talk about the two-dimensional case, but everything also generalizes into higher dimensions. So let's start with some motivation. Uh, imagine you have some data represented as points in two-dimensional Euclidean plane. Now here on the left, you see that there is some sort of circle. And on the right, maybe there's a bigger one. And these kind of features uh, are often interesting in data. So you might want to have some algorithm that automatically recognizes these features. The first question is, how do you even define what a circle is? Uh, a common approach is to thicken your points take disks of some given radius around each point, take the union of those disks, and then instead of looking for circles, you look for holes in this object. So here you can see some region which is bounded by our shape. Now for different radii, you get different information. And uh, people study uh, how those holes are created and when do they disappear. This is something that persistent homology studies. And this is all very well defined, but you might imagine that computers are not too happy with this sort of representation. And you might uh, much rather have something discrete or combinatorial as this blue object. And you would like it to still convey the same message. Like if I forget about those growing disks, you see that there still is some hole here and I have some parameter that I can change and then the hole disappears. If I grow it even more, another one appears and ultimately also disappears. So this blue combinatorial object is alpha complex and this is what I mainly want to define at the end of this tutorial. But let me start with something that might seem a bit unrelated at first, the Voronoi diagram. Again, we have some finite set of points in a plane. And now imagine you put a new point in and you want to know what is the closest data point to this new red point? And you can, uh, you can decompose the whole plane uh, according to this. So this is the Voronoi diagram. For each point, we have Voronoi cell, which is the set of points in the plane closer to this data point than to any other. You see that if I move from cell to cell, then the closest neighbor changes. The intersection of two Voronoi cells is a Voronoi edge, and intersection of three Voronoi cells is a Voronoi vertex. Now, to connect this to those growing disks I was talking about before, you can look at it from another direction. If you grow disks uh, at the same pace from each of your uh, data points, then the Voronoi cell is a region of all points that are first covered by the disk growing from this point. And you see that uh, two disks meet along Voronoi edge and three disks meet at a Voronoi vertex. So with this, it might be surprising that they have such a nice shape. They are the, the Voronoi cells are uh, convex polytopes. Well, to see this, uh, look at this middle blue point and its cell. If we want to obtain just this cell, uh, we can do the following process. Take another point in your uh, data cloud and draw the bisector. Now on the right side, we have points that are closer to the blue point, And on the left side of the bisector, everything is closer to the red point. So you know that the, whole, the, the Voronoi cell of the blue point needs to lie completely on the right side of this bisector. Now you can do this for another point in your point cloud. And it cuts uh, the Voronoi cell from another direction. And you can continue and do this for all the points that you have. And there you go you have a convex polytope. This is the Voronoi cell of the blue point. Now, uh, I want to show you a third perspective on the Voronoi diagram, kind of dual to these uh, growing disks from your 
data points. Imagine that instead of growing the disks from uh, the data points, you grow it from this new point. And this is particularly interesting when you put the new point in the Voronoi vertex. Because then, at some radius, you touch all three of those points at the same time. And this is something that you can use uh, to characterize Voronoi vertices. So for any three points in your uh, point cloud, you can take the circumcircle and look at the center. Now, if the circumcircle is empty, uh, the center of it will be Voronoi vertex. You see that if I move this uh, one point around, uh, then the center of the circumcircle is still Voronoi vertex. But once I move inside, it is not a Voronoi vertex anymore because this gray point is closer to the center than any of the blue points. And this can also be uh, set for the Voronoi edges. A Voronoi edge is a collection of all centers of circumcircles of those two blue points, which are empty, which do not have any other data point inside. So you see that it's kind of bounded by these two red points, uh, because if we would continue further in either of the directions, they would get in. So just to recapitulate, uh, Voronoi diagram is the composition of plane into regions of points that are closest to each of the data points. Uh, we can look at it as, you know, with the language of disks of growing radius as well. They have very nice shape. They are uh, convex polytopes and the Voronoi vertices and edges can be characterized by uh, centers of circumcircles. Now we are ready to define the Delony complex. Delony complex is a combinatorial object. It's some collection of edges and triangles that captures the intersection pattern of the Voronoi cells. So for every pair of Voronoi cells that meet, we have an edge. And for every triple of Voronoi cells that meet, we have a triangle. It is really an abstract simplicial complex, but it has this nice non-trivial property that it can always be drawn into the space where our points live, as you can see here. This is nice because it's pretty intuitive, but also for computational reasons, because it keeps the dimension and therefore also the size of the complex under control. So geometrically, the Delony complex or its drawing always gives us a triangulation of uh, the convex hull of the point. Now, there's one detail that I should address now. I'm talking about edges and triangles, but what if four points meet or four Voronoi cells meet? Now, this can happen and I won't go into details of this, but often what people do is to just disregard this as uh, a degenerate case because you can always wiggle your points ever so slightly so that nothing really changes, but you don't have this degenerate case. Now you see that I can choose whether the point is inside or outside of this circumcircle of the other three points. What that corresponds to in the Delony complex is choosing whether I triangulate this quadrangle in one way or another. Now, this also gets us to the second possible definition of Delony complex. Uh, we can characterize the triangles via circumcircles. So let's say we take these three points and we ask whether this pink triangle is in the Delony complex. We can draw the circumcircle of the triangle and ask whether it's empty. So you see there aren't any uh, other data points inside of the circle. And so this pink triangle is the part of the Delony complex. But once I move this point inside, then suddenly we don't have this pink triangle as a part of the Delony complex. And this is exactly the same characterization as I described before for the Voronoi vertices, because Voronoi vertices correspond exactly to Delony triangles. 
Uh, but this definition is nice because that means that we can define the Delaunay complex also independently of the Voronoi diagram. We can just say that uh, it's the collection of all triangles with this property that we can draw its circumcircle and it's empty of all other data points. So to summarize, Delaunay complexes can be defined as uh, the intersection pattern of the Voronoi cells or using circumcircles checking whether they are empty or not. Now to put it all together, uh, recall the concept of growing disks. We can use these to filter the Delaunay complex. So for some given radius, we only take those edges and those triangles for which the corresponding disks already met. Now this is what we call alpha complex and we really have a growing chain of these alpha complexes. Now what is nice is that for example here you can notice that the alpha complex has one hole just as the union of the disks and also both of these objects have two components of connectivity. Now this is something that holds in general according to the nerve theorem an important mathematical result the alpha complex and the union of the disks are homotopy equivalent. So in particular, they share those topological features. But something even stronger holds by a stronger version of the same theorem, persistent nerve theorem. Also the inclusion maps of those two objects nicely mirror each other. And this means that if you are performing topological data analysis or persistent homology, it really doesn't matter whether you look at those growing disks or at the chain of alpha complexes. And this is great because the alpha complexes are finite objects easily representable in the computer. And so you can work with these and perform this analysis algorithmically. And this is all I have for you today. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Check also the other videos on this channel and hopefully see you some next time.